So this time we got tan of uh, 210 degrees. This time we don't have it in radians, we just have it in degrees. And we can keep it that way if we want. So let me just show you this. So I'll show you um, one way to do it is to just, well, first draw the angle. Let's see what's going on here. I'll do it in degrees. I may as well keep it in degrees. So this here is 0 degrees. This here is 180 degrees. Well, if I want 210, that's a little bit past that, isn't it? Isn't that like somewhere like this? In fact, what's this angle here? Well, it's 180 plus what gives me 210? Does it make sense? It's 30 degrees here. That would be my 30 degrees. There we go. If I use just special triangles, this is an example where it'll be easier to use special triangles here. So let me just, just focus on this piece right here. So I've got this 30 degrees here. This here is 60. This is 90. If you remember special triangles, um, this goes 1, this is 2, and this is root 3. All right, well then if I wanted to do the tangent of 30 degrees, so by the way, I should write that down. My reference angle was 30 degrees. Then if I want the tangent, let's do the tangent of 30 degrees. Let's figure that out. The tangent of 30 degrees is going to be, well, opposite over um, adjacent. So it's going to be 1 over root 3. Then I would think, um, okay, well, I need to think about the quadrants. So let me think about that. So all students take calculus. And I finish in this quadrant down here. Remember, I'm finishing in the lower left here. I'm finishing somewhere down here. Now, only tangent is positive, right? So I know that tan is positive here. And that's what I wanted. I wanted tan. So good news, it's going to be positive. Therefore, I can state without a doubt then that the tangent of 210 degrees is going to be equal to a positive 1 over root 3. So just what we had before. We didn't have to change the sign. And I'm done. Now, could you have done this with the hand trick? Yes. The only problem is the hand trick fails you because it only gives you sine and cos. You'd have to be a little bit clever. You would have to say, if you want to use a hand trick, you have to say, well, mm, let me just show you how I would have done that. With the hand trick, I would have done, you have to be a little bit more clever. You have to use this identity that we learned that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. If you use that, you could have done it. Because then you'd know that tan 30 is sine 30 over cos 30. Well, what's sine 30? We need And we need cos 30. So you'd have to figure out sine 30. Let's see, I hide that finger there. It's going to be 1 over 2. So it's going to be 1 half here. So that's how I would get 1 half. Oops, that's a bad 2. There we go. And cos 30 would be, let's see here. Cos is 1, 2, 3. So root 3 over 2. So it'll be root 3 over 2, which is complicated. What happens when you divide a fraction by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. So this would become a 2 here and a root 3 here. Like that right there. Is that right? Oh, this is a 2. Sorry, that's a. That's just my writing is so bad. This is a 2 here. The 2s would cancel out. You'd have 1 over root 3. Ta-da! So it was a little bit harder. That's why these are harder questions, clearly. All right, are you ready for the hardest version? If you can do it, maybe let's put this here for you when you're trying your best, but nothing's going right. <laughs> Let me show you one now. We have to work a little bit backwards. So here, do you notice we don't know the angle? On all the other ones, we knew the angles. See? Here, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to start with quadrants. Okay? That's what we're going to start with. Then we're going to go to exact value. You know? That's sort of the, the idea. We're going to start with quadrants, and we're going to do exact values, then we're going to do a reference angle, and then we're going to go to x. That's going to be the idea behind this one. So let's see if we can do this. All right. Whew. Is it with me? Here we go. We have to find out when is sine negative. See that? We have a sine of something, some angle. I know that the angle is between 0 and 2 pi. This is, by the way, almost as hard as it gets now, so it doesn't get much harder than this. So let's just think about this. When is sine negative? Okay, so we'll do when is sine equal to negative? Question mark. Well, let's think about our quadrants here. When is sine negative? When can sine be negative? Remember, we have all students take calculus. When can sine be negative? Well, sine can be negative. Let's see. Is it negative up here? No, they're all positive. Is it negative up here? No, they're all uh, sine is positive up here. So it must be here or here. Do you notice them? So this or this are allowed. There's two answers possible. Do you notice that? So that's useful.
So now I figured out with my quadrants, okay, how about my exact values? It's a little bit trickier. Maybe the, because um, we have to think, when in the world can I get a one half? So you can think about this, you can think about the special triangles and think, when will I get a special triangle with an answer being one half? Like, a sign of something. So let's just remind ourselves there's 60 degrees, there's the 30 degree, there's this, and it goes 1, 2, root 3. There's also the one that goes 1, 1, root 2 if it's 45 degrees. All right. So let's think about this then. When, when I do a sign of something, can I get 1 over 2? Do you notice it can't be this because I've always got a root 2? So that's how I know for sure it can't be this one. Because the sine, we have to have the sine of x must be equal to 1 half. All right, so there's no way I could do that. When could I have a sine here? Let's pretend, let's see if it's 60 degrees. Does 60 degree work? Sine, let's see, sine is sokatoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. It's root 3 over 2. Nope. Therefore, it must be 30 degrees. Let's see if that works. Let's guess a reference angle equals 30 degrees. Does that work? Let's see, sine of 30 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse of 1 over 2. Hey, it works. So I know my reference angle is 30 degrees. Remember the negative just told me where it was down here or here. But the angle, the actual value is 1 over 2. So this is important. That's where I know that, hey, my reference angle uh, must be 30 degrees. I'm just trying to make a nicer 2 here. All right, this is important because now I figured out my reference angle. So now I can redraw. Let's see if I can do that now. So now I know my angle can be. By the way, what is that in radians? Because we're supposed to do it in radians here. Uh, what's that in radians? You have to remember that, but 30 degrees is pi over 6. Or you can do the conversion. Remember, you can always convert it, or you can sit there and draw it and figure it out, right? But 30 degrees, That's ha uh, this is 0, this is pi, um, or 180, and then 30 degrees is 180 divided by 6. So that's why I know it's a sixth of this. Anyway, so I know that my reference angle then is pi over 6. That's even better. I have my reference angle in radians. Even better. So now I know my reference angle in radians. That means I know that this value right here, I can draw it now. I know that it's going to go, well, down here, this is pi over 6. I know that's also here, where this is pi over 6. Now, how do I actually name these angles? This is the problem. See, these angles have to be between 0 and 2 pi, so they both are because this is 0. 2 pi is all the way around. So if I think about this, and how do I do this angle? Well, this is going to be a little bit hard, but watch carefully. I'm going to go x1, the first one, let's just say. Let's call it, uh, let's do it in blue maybe. It will be this angle going from here all the way around to this one. I want it to finish here. Well, i got to do pi plus pi over 6. Does that make any sense? I'm going to do pi plus pi over 6. That's what that angle is. It starts off from 0, goes all the way around to pi, and then I add that little reference angle of pi over 6. That's this. And my second one, let me do it in maybe a different color. My second one is, um, well, I can think of it this way. I can think of it as all the way around to 2 pi, and then subtract from it pi over 6. Does that make sense? It's like, let's see, I'll try to draw like this. Like this, and like this right here. To go around like that. That's the same thing as going all the way around to 2 pi and then subtracting pi over 6. So I'm going to say that one. I'll call it x2. And I'll say it's equal to 2 pi minus pi over 6. So see if the drawing helps you to know what to do. Otherwise, this would be nonsense. All right, so let's keep going now. We're almost done then. So x1, let's see. It equals, i got to get a common denominator. So this must be 6 pi over 6 because that's the same thing as pi plus pi over 6. What does that give me? That gives me x1 equals, well, 7 pi over 6. There's one answer. And the second one, let's see, it's going to be, I've got to do 2 pi. i got to do something over 6, so I'll have to make it 12 pi over 6, because that's the only way to get a 2 here. You can think of that as a 1, and then I have to multiply by 6 to get it to 6, so 2 times 6 is this, minus pi over 6. All right, I keep going. What's 12 pi minus 1 pi? It's 11 pi so this is really quite tough now. Notice, so there's my answer here, is this one and this one. Ugh, so maybe you feel like this dog right here when you're done, but there we go. We're actually finished. We've done this. We found everything we needed. Phew! Remember, I did promise you. 
These are supposed to be more difficult ones. Do you agree with me? That was actually pretty tough. These are the ones that students really, really struggle with. If you can even follow some of this question right here, you're doing really well. Well done. You should be proud of yourself.